Evening. Um, a, a day later than promised, we've got uh, part two of the uh, King Kraken Legato class. Um, I did say my punctuality wasn't up to much and I was serious. <laughs> so, um, anybody that watched last time, um, you might remember that we looked at the uh, half and full rolls. So, just to recap. Um, <laughs> That would be the half roll, and then the full rolls that we looked at. So, <clears throat> I did promise that this time I'd show you the uh, the final piece in um, the sort of how to make good use of the technique class. So, so far we've done hammer-ons and pull-offs um, and the one part left is, well, I suppose it's fairly obvious really, but it's a slide. So, because hammer-ons, pull-offs and slides, they are the three things that constitute um, legato as far as a guitar or any stringed instrument with frets is concerned. So, once you incorporate the slides into the hammer-ons and pull-offs, that's kind of, um, that's when the real speed comes in, really. If, uh, if that's what you're looking for, then this is where you'll find it. So, um, we'll begin on the top E string, and what we're going to do is play two very simple shapes. Um, they're groups of five notes. So if you start with your first finger on the 5th fret, play in the top A. We're going to hammer onto the 7th fret, the B, and then to the C at the 8th fret. So, okay, and then to make it a group of 5, we're going to pull back off, um, back through the B and the A, so. Uh, groups of 5, they don't really feel natural to begin with, but um, instead of thinking of it as five notes, just think of it as a pattern and when we come to playing it with a metronome you just basically aim for the first of each group to find a beat and you, you, you won't be counting five notes, um, it'll just, or it should just flow. So we'll play those five and then this is where the slide comes in. Once you pull off to the A, slide from the A up to the B at the 7th fret, so... And then your next group of 5 notes are B, C at the 8th fret, and D at the 10th fret, so... So very simple, we've got... Now, I would think of each group of five as a phrase to learn individually. Or you could think of the whole thing as ten, but either way, right, basically to start with, just practice looping that so that you've got... So it can end up quite fast, but before you end up playing at that speed, I would recommend, as ever, turn the metronome on. Um, maybe if we try 100 beats per minute, so we're going to put each of those five note sections to a beat now. I will try to. So. Um, Okay, so the only note that's picked is the very first one, the slide and the hammer-ons and the pull-offs are generated in all the rest of the notes, okay, so... I apologise for the uh, string noise there. Now, <clears throat> basically the, the, the most important thing is that each one of the notes is 
um, an equal length, right? So because otherwise it'll just sound rushed um, and messy. So once you're comfortable with. You, you've got two options to develop. The first one is instead of just sliding between two uh, three note segments, you can slide up again. So maybe um, from the seventh fret, slide up again to the eighth fret, the C. And um, we're playing in the key of, um, well, A minor. Uh, yeah, we'll call that A minor, the notes that we've got here. So the next three notes would be C, D, and E. So, so <clears throat> that's uh, the most obvious first development of the idea. The second one. Uh, which is slightly more complicated, it is to use a pair of strings. So you'd play the first five notes that we looked at. And then uh, I suppose the most obvious thing to do would be to turn it inside out on the string below. We haven't got a string above, obviously. So if you... It's a very simple idea. So what I'm doing is playing exactly the same three frets. So we've got the G at the eighth fret, pulling off to an F sharp at the seventh fret, and an E at the fifth fret, and back onto the F sharp and back onto the G. So. Um, <clears throat> you could pick the first note on each string. Like I mentioned in, I think, the last video, I tend to use what's called a hammer-on from nowhere, so I'm only actually picking the A. That note is just a hammer-on with a little finger, because... Okay, so from there then, um, you could develop that by um, incorporating the two strings and moving up the neck like we did with the one string idea. So, so. sorry. Okay, <clears throat> basically once you've got that idea down, you can apply that to literally any um, three note per string scale shape and between the hammer-ons, the pull-offs and the slides, you, you're basically free to do whatever you want. I mean, players like, uh, I don't know, Joe Satriani, that is literally uh, where he lives, you know, that's uh, most of his vast soloing is based on those sort of ideas, you know, so. Pick a scale and just, you know, you, you can fly around the neck like that. Um, to develop the idea slightly further, you can do things like, instead of literally just playing a group of five, you can maybe add a trill with the little finger to make it a group of six. So, um, a little bit trickier. Um, it sounds a little bit more interesting when you speed it up because um, instead of just being um, you know, two groups of fives connected. You've got the extra contour in the shape, so fast it would be a little bit. Um... Uh, 
I, I did promise speed. <laughs> um, or oh, another thing that you can do to make groups of six, because groups of six um, is a lot more friendly than a group of five. So maybe you could play a group of five there and then add the G from the string below. So. triplets or sextuplets depending on which way you look at it they do sound um, a lot more familiar to a lot of people than uh, fives you know quintuplets are, they are a little bit odd no pun intended so you can move that idea up to the next shape as well Kind of um, um, you can also use the six notes uh, to turn the the two string pairing that I showed you. You can turn that into a group of six as well if you play like um, so. So what we're doing is we're playing five notes on the top string and then our sixth note, the G on the B string. So that's the same as what we just did, but then we'll play A on the top E and the five notes reversed on the string below. So if you combine them, Very, uh, that's less Joe Saturani and a bit more Paul Gilbert. Um, so yeah, I'd practice all of these ideas with a metronome. Um, it, it sort of gets to the point where speed is just a byproduct of this technique, so you do end up with um, a blur of notes really. My, uh, my metronome only actually goes up to, uh, uh, what have we got? 208 beats per minute, so <laughs> the uh, the five note group ends. Once I got to 208, I just thought uh, that's quick enough. I mean, it's uh, so yeah, you can um, you can get some speed out of this technique. Uh, I suppose one final thing to add to that is if you try um, a little eight note grouping that I quite like, so um, so the grouping is um, So we've got the full roll starting at the 5th fret on the uh, top E. And then from there we're sliding up to the 7th fret. So it's actually exactly the same as the first idea that I showed you. Except that instead of being groups of 5, this one then goes down onto the B string. So you've got... Those six notes there, so we're doing A, G, F sharp, slide into E, hammering on back to F sharp, and hammering on the G. So, um, and again, like the last idea, you, you can also, once you get comfortable with that. Uh, two position phrase you can move it up to the next uh, set of notes within whatever scale so in this case it would be um, a 
Okay, so with a metronome, um, if we take it down from that ridiculous tempo, um, I normally practice that idea at 120 beats a minute, um, eight notes per beat. So. to extend it. Uh, here we go. Okay, that was a little bit scrappy, I do apologize. Um, <clears throat> it's, that's not a very musical lesson. Um, I hope that what you take from that is um, the technique because in itself there is obviously nothing musical about simply playing groups of five notes as fast as you can. Um, it is fun, but it gets boring very quickly as well. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't uh, recommend that for an extended period of time. Um, the If there is any more interest, then the uh, next thing that I would show from this is basically how to incorporate... Um, right hand tap notes to extend the uh, legato runs because obviously these are all three note per string ideas but you can add a fourth note like for example um, that kind of lick it uses the simple legato ideas that we've just been looking at but um, it is extended by the use of a fourth finger. So, um, yeah, that, that's, I, I won't go any more into detail with that now because uh, you've got some stuff to get on with, but they, um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed. Okay.